It was classics from Dior and Chanel that really were the highlights of August. Welcome back, everybody. It's the end of August. I'm going to give you a very brief roundup of my life in perfume for the last 30, 31 days. I'll let you know what I wore most of. A couple of the things that I sampled as well. I didn't actually do a lot of sampling this month, even though this month I actually received a whole bunch of new samples, which you're going to probably see on the channel over the coming months. I'm going to do uh, reviews of as many of them as I can. But but for August, I did wear a couple, which I'll mention briefly. Um, and as I mentioned in the intro, uh, my highlights for the month came from kind of unexpected places in terms of perfume. So l- let me get through what I wore most of for the, the month of August. I am currently wearing, so it happens to be my scent of the day, uh, Ombre Fetish from Anik Gutal. This is, to put it plainly, my my current favourite amber perfume. I think what I like about it is it's it seems to me less sweet than a lot of this amber style perfume. I, I, there's not a bunch of vanilla in this that I detect. And so the amber accord from my nose is predominantly coming from a labdanum base, which in turn also gives it this quite smoky, slightly oily, leathery aspect to it. And there is also this really nice very brief moment of citrus sparkle in the in the opening before it gets into into that full blown amber and i smell this all day long and as you can see this is my bottle this is not original ombre fetish like as in uh, an older style bottle i think this was the next iteration and now it comes in bottles that look like this up on the screen so I don't know what the current bottles smell or perform like, but I'm absolutely infatuated with this Ombre Fetiche at the moment. The other perfume that I wore a lot of this month and that I enjoyed equally for the whole week was Opopanax from Santa Maria Novella. It was just like a pleasure to wear every day. Each day I sprayed it on and it was like I had not worn it for a long time, even though I wore it the the previous day. So I wore that for a whole week, really enjoyed it. I always enjoy wearing Le Troisiemont from Caron and it was no exception again. So I wore that for a whole week and... Also, my favourite rose incense, Epic Woman from Amouage, got a very thorough working over uh, for the month of August. Before I get to my highlights, which I'll leave to the end of the video, I want to talk about the samples that I tried this month, notable ones. So I... So I got a sample of Loon from Hima Jomo, and uh, I also wore a sample of Boucheron's Jaipur Om or the Toilette. And I will, I still have enough of the Boucheron to um, talk about it in more detail down the track. It was one where, so I don't have a lot to say about it. I, I didn't. I had a good impression, put it that way. The loon, I only got one wear out of the sample that I have, so I didn't didn't have a lot of that. And also now, because it was a couple of weeks ago, I'm probably hesitant to talk about what I smelled, but what I would suggest to do is um, I'll link to Henna's review of this perfume because she's the one that 
put me onto uh, this particular perfume. So have a look at that um, and you'll get a good impression of what it smells like. The other sample that I want to talk about that I that I smelled only this morning, actually, is a perfume that I had I have heard a lot about. It was it was something that I've been wanting to smell actually for years. But for some reason this brand is not available anywhere for smelling. And it's actually I, I don't see it. Uh, online a lot. I don't see it on discounters too much, although admittedly I haven't looked very, very hard, but the the short story of this long-winded thing that I'm trying to say is that uh, Fed on Tabac Rouge is a perfume that I've been wanting to smell for a long time, and I finally got a sample of it. So early on in my exploration of perfume, I would read a lot of very good things about this in the category of, I guess, sweet tobacco perfumes. So obviously the big one that a lot of people would know about is Tobacco Vanille from Tom Ford. Now, Tobacco Vanille is a perfume that I was one of the very early perfumes I wore uh, through a decant when... I was really getting starting to get into perfume. And even though I liked it initially, uh, as I did a lot of gourmand, sort of gourmandy sweet perfumes, after a while it it kind of became too much. Tobacco vanille became a bit of a monster. And I also realized after some time that what I didn't love about Tobacco Vanille was its spiciness. And particularly, I, I, even though I like clove as a note, I, that clove in the Tobacco Vanille that I had, I don't know what it smells like these days because I haven't tried any new versions of it, was a bit too much for me. And it kind of really sort of made me look past it in terms of finding uh, my favourite tobacco, honey tobacco, sweet tobacco, whatever you want to call that category. Uh, since then, I tried others, things like Parfum de Mali's Herod, which I didn't like, and uh, I have a bottle of Serge Lutin's Fumeri Tuk, which I really like, but that is very different. It's a very different composition to something like Tobacco Vanille. Anyway, Tabac Rouge by Fadon was compared to Tobacco Vanille quite a lot in reviews. And so now when I went to spray this on, my hopes weren't too elevated because I, I guess I thought this, this will smell like Tobacco Vanille and I probably won't like it. But I was so pleasantly surprised when I sprayed this on because first of all, what surprised me and and I didn't expect to get was um, this quite noticeable ginger note in the in the opening of the perfume. Um, so that was a really unexpected, pleasant surprise to me. It it definitely lacks the spiciness of tobacco vanille, which was another plus for me in this perfume. After a while. I could I can I could definitely understand why people compare these two perfumes but I really liked the fact that I could quite clearly smell the tobacco note in this perfume whereas if I recall I I remember with tobacco vanille I smelled a lot of the vanille and not enough of the tobacco and um tobacco rouge by Fedon basically gives me all the stuff that I wanted without the stuff that I didn't want. And I really like it. And I'm also tempted, not tempted, but it, it, let's put it this way. For first wear, it made the best possible impression on me. I, I think the longevity and the performance is pretty good uh, compared, uh, I guess, not compared to the monster that that, version of Tobacco Vinny was, but it's enough. This type of perfume for me is 
can't be too monstrous in terms of projection and sillage. So I quite like it for that reason. Okay, so moving on to my highlights for August. Uh, They came from unexpected quarters, not because these aren't good perfumes. In fact, they're great perfumes, but August here is the end of winter in Melbourne, and we also tend to get one or two odd days that give you a preview of spring. So the the weather is a little bit milder. And so I naturally get very excited. And on a couple of days that, that that happened here last week, in fact, I decided to get a couple of fresher perfumes that I had not worn probably since February, um, which is the end of summer here. And when I sprayed them on, it's not it's not as if the perfumes changed and they smelled different uh, to my nose, but I think I really enjoyed wearing them purely because of how they made me feel. Uh, and I won't talk about uh, how they smell either because a lot of you will recognize these perfumes and know how they smell. Uh, the first one was number 19 or the toilette from Chanel. I got a lot of iris out of this from the last wear and I enjoyed it. Uh, and the second one was Dior's or Sauvage or the Toilette. This is the current version. This is a 2020 bottle. Uh, it does not last very long, but I tell you what, that initial blast from this perfume is like a a perfume antidepressant uh, and I really loved wearing it and I was basking in its citrusy, floral, musky glow for a couple of hours and um, but it put me in a good mood for the rest of the day. So that was my month of August in perfume. Uh, So let me know what you enjoyed in the last month and I'll see you all for the next video. Bye for now.